Okay, that looks pretty good. So let me just hit save here really quickly. And oh, no, that's not what I wanted. And, oh no, I did it again. So if this has happened to you, what you've done is you press shift S. Maybe you're trying to press control S to save, or maybe you're just pressing around some random buttons. But basically you took a screenshot or a snapshot, which is the uh, correct ZBrush term for this, of your model, okay? You didn't error out your, your program, didn't freeze or anything. It just took a snapshot. So if I zoom out here of the document, that's this area here, or your canvas, uh, right, you can see that. So to get rid of that, press Control N, and that will clear that. And that's how you get rid of that. And if you're here for that, that's how you do that. But what I want to talk about next is how to use Snapshot or Shift S to your advantage, right? Why would we use it? What does it do? And how to take advantage of it? And yeah, how to kind of use it in a positive way as opposed to mistakenly using it all the time and not knowing what it does. So why would you actually use Shift S? Okay, so let's get into that. So Shift S you know, let's say I want a side view of this guy, but I kind of want to keep it here, right? Or here, or here, or anywhere, right? I just move that to the side there, press Shift S. Okay, and now it stays there. And now I can continue working on my model as I see fit, right? As I see fit, right? Do whatever I want and maybe compare things. And then when I'm done with this side, I can go, ah, okay, you know what? I kind of want that side, Shift S. Okay, and right, work on this side, so on and so forth. And let's say you have a client, right? They just want a little bit of an update on what's going on. So Shift S. From that side and so shift s from that side and we can maybe go for the back view as well shift s and what we'll do is we'll go to document we'll go to export okay and then we can export this as a jpeg if we go to save okay won't save it just yet you can you can crop it okay as you can see here okay we can move it either here or we can use this sort of cropping tool over here to crop it then we can hit okay and that will save it out so that's just a really good way to do that and in case you're wanting this background uh, you can go to document and you can go to range and bring that all the way up that will give you uh, no gradient okay so I, I i do like a little bit of a gradient so i keep that on and in case you're wondering can you change the color yes you can just hold down the space bar okay change it to any color you want really and let's go for this one maybe okay so any color you want right this is your primary color by the way it says their main color right main color select that go to document and just click on back click and then there you have it okay and you can go to document export again and I will export it as a JPEG with that background and yeah there you have it so that's one way of using screenshots or uh, snapshots just to get screenshots of your uh, model right okay so that's pretty much it for that but now what I want to talk about next is markers so let's say you know every time you're doing this you're like okay shift s shift s and then you know you keep doing this it's like it's kind of annoying right because you have to do it every time so in order to avoid that what we can do is again create the one that we want position it and we're going to use markers next okay so i just zoom out okay making sure that you can kind of see the extents of your canvas that's one two try and keep perspective off right because then every time you're gonna to have to kind of you know move it around for perspective so keep perspective off you don't have to keep it off but it's recommended okay so marker we're going to click on marker plus okay so click on that and then press shift s okay now we're going to move it again and we had a uh, i guess we had a front view here okay so we can go to marker, marker plus, okay, shift S, and let's take this view. Okay, we'll make this one a little bit bigger. Okay, marker, marker plus, shift S, and the shift S is so I can see it. You don't actually have to press shift S, by the way. Okay, uh, and then marker, marker plus, shift S. Okay, so now we have our setup for all of this. Okay, so what I'm going to do is press control N and press T. Okay, so T is this button here to get out of edit mode. I'm going to say switch, press Ctrl N again. And now we can see our markers here. If you can't see your markers, what you want to do is go on over to preferences. And luckily, everything's in alphabetical order, so you can find stuff very easily in ZBrush. We're going to go over to marker, and the marker radius, I think, is at 100, maybe. Okay, I'll put it, I'll keep it at 100. And what you'll do, what you'll see is only when you get close to it with your cursor, right? So it's like detecting, there you go. Okay, so basically, the distance from your cursor to that. It's kind of detecting that right so it doesn't get in your way right so you can kind of see it here there you go right but it's hard to find so you want to go back to marker so not marker preferences marker radius all the way up now we can see all of them right so that's pretty good so what you want to do next again not in edit mode okay we're out of edit mode shortcut t just click on this there you go click on this one there you go again click on that and then click on that and now you're done so that's all you have to do you just have to set up your markers which takes up the time and then now you can do this and then over and over again again go to document and here you can see the markers but if we go to document export uh save you won't actually see the markers right you don't see them here okay 
And again, you'll also notice that the markers are on the top of the model roughly. Okay. And yeah, that is pretty much it. Um, one thing you can't do is render this. Okay. Uh, but you can go to render and you can say best, I believe. That'll create some sort of uh, render here. So just have a look at that. So there. Give that a second, right? There you go. Okay. So, right. You can render these. You can't do a BPR render, which is something else. Uh, but you can render it, right? Slightly. And again, of course, you can go to document and change the color if you want. My right, document uh, back. Okay, that'll change and it will have to re-render that unfortunately okay there you go and then of course right same thing document export and yeah so that's how you use oh, yeah, and if you do move it it's gonna get rid of your render so be careful of that and yeah but yeah that's how you use markers and that's how you can kind of set them up really quickly so every time you take a screenshot right you can do that again we're out of edit mode right click on these markers and oh we're over here Control n what i'll do is i will Click on this marker and what we can do is go to marker and delete that marker. Okay, so now you'll see it's no longer there. Okay, control N. Right, it's no longer there. So select this marker, again go to marker, delete that. Of course you can delete all, you can switch them on and off, right? Um, pretty self-explanatory for once, right? ZBrush has made this pretty easy, right? So you got delete all, on and off, show, right? You can hold control and hover over these just to see what they do. But yeah, pretty self-explanatory. So that's how you do that, that's how you create markers and if you want so let's say that you have like another bust of a character, let's say Spider-Man or Venom or whatever, right? And they're roughly the same size. You can bring that in and use the exact same markers and that'll scale to that. But of course it doesn't work if your scaling is off with a model. So that's also a different thing. But as you can see, creating markers pretty easy. Shift S is now your friend and no longer your enemy, right? You know what it does. And again, you can press Control N to get rid of all of those. So hope this helps. And this is a new series I've started. So just to kind of help everybody out, kind of like when you make a you know, mistake in ZBrush, that's just a series I'm creating here, the help series. And definitely let me know what things bother you with ZBrush, right? What mistakes you've made, what things have crashed to ZBrush, or you're not sure what you've done, what you've pressed. And I'll try and help you out with that as well. Um, so yeah, let me know your, leave your problems in the comment section. And um, yeah, like it if you liked it, dislike it if you didn't. Let me know what you guys thought about in the comment section. And if you really like my content, you can subscribe or you can check out my paid tutorials down below. Thanks again, guys. I'll see you in the next one.